welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing what's in my high school art portfolio. Um, I kid you not, this is the fifth time I filmed this. Let's hope this is the one. Okay, so I'm going to start by saying I applied to 14 different schools and I got into 10 of them. So I'm going to put a list right here and I was accepted by Portland State University, Washington State University, uh, Otis, SAIC, Micah, UW, Emily Carr, Parsons, Pratt, and RISD. And no surprise here, I was rejected from Columbia, Yale, NYU, and USC. I studied pretty hard in high school, so my GPA was a 3.7, and I forgot my SAT score, but I'll put it in here somewhere. I decided I wanted to go to art school at the end of my sophomore year, so I didn't really get started in my portfolio until the beginning of my junior year. I know a lot of people start their portfolios their freshman year and their sophomore year, so yeah, I was really late to the game, but I managed to make it work. I attended two different studios that helped me when it came to preparing to submit my portfolio. Outside of that, my only other extracurricular was volunteering at the Seattle Art Museum. I was a member of their teen arts group. That is also something I would highly recommend. Um, if you have an art museum in your area, go on their website and look at their teen programs and see if they have anywhere for you to get involved with the museum because I definitely learned a lot about professional art, different jobs in the art industry, as well as tremendous amount of art history through giving tours and also getting to explore all the art and all the exhibits that came through. And in terms of AP classes, the school that I went to for the first three years of high school didn't offer any advanced art classes, so I kind of took it upon myself to create my own AP2D portfolio and I did that over the span of a year, submitted it, got a five, yay. And the only other art AP I'm taking is AP Art History this year. Before I get into my art portfolio, which I know is what a lot of you came here to see, I just wanted to preface by saying that I am truly blessed and I am truly privileged to have been able to study at these two studios. I know there are huge inequities when it comes to access to arts education and I wanted to acknowledge that here. I wanted to link below a YouTube channel that I highly recommend. They give similar training that my one of my art studios does. Their channel focuses a lot on pencil rendering and oil painting, which is basically what my studio did. And I know RISD really values technical skills, so I think it would be definitely important to include still lifes in your portfolio. I just wanted to say that because a lot of my portfolio is made up of work that I did at my studio and I know that my skills and uh, my portfolio would not be the way it is right now if I did not have access to the studio and the teachers there. To start off my portfolio, I have this bust of Giuliano de' Medici. Um, it is rendered in pencil. I literally sat there for hours with a bust right across from me, just sketching this. It's pretty boring. There's not really much to this piece. The next one is entitled Don't Tell. I threw this together very last minute for an art show, so that's why it isn't the strongest, but it's just about how I kind of feel trapped in this rainbow. So the next piece is titled Flow. Um, this is an older painting of mine. I wanted to make it look like there was movement and connection throughout the entire piece. It starts with the water in the head cavity um, flowing from the eyes as tears down into the big wave. And this piece is meant to symbolize procrastination, running out of time, the fact that time always moved. I was also inspired by Van Gogh's stars in Starry Night. Like everyone is, I decided to blend out the clocks in the background with harsher brush strokes to kind of emulate that style. I need more coffee for this piece. <laughs> All right, so this piece is entitled Garden of Eden. I know I said that the rainbow one was thrown together, but this one is more thrown together than that one. As I said, I started my portfolio late in the game, so I 
have been behind in every single step of the process. This definitely represents that because I did this a week before a lot of my, my applications were due. But the concept of this piece I think is really cool. Um, it came from my freshman health teacher who always said that marijuana is a gateway drug. And when I think of that, I kind of envision like a secret garden. So I wanted to make this whimsical looking garden, but then replace all the plants with some druggy stuff. I tried my best with the time I was given. Okay, so this one is pretty basic. It's called Still Life in Cool Tones. I actually have this piece right here with me. Um, it's pretty small. So this piece is titled Home is Where the Heart Isn't. So in this piece, I was really experimenting with a new style in oil. And although it turned out really flat, I kind of think it adds to the piece a bit. It makes it a little bit more visually appealing. Yeah, I'm trying to make my lack of skill sound a little more thought out, but <laughs> I promise you, I really did think this piece through because I knew it could come off as offensive to a lot of people, and it certainly did. But on the other hand, I think this was a really important topic to talk about because I am from the Seattle-Tacoma area, so this is a scene that I've witnessed many times, and a lot of the times I am the person walking by. People's attitudes in this area have definitely changed from one of sympathy and love to anger, resentment. As an artist, I wanted to show what I saw, so the dark colors on the homeless man are very contrasted by the shiny window of purses. Yes, I used Hermes purses as my reference because of how iconic and how recognizable they are. This next piece is titled Jar and Fruit Still Life. Not much to say about it. Pencil. Rendered. Um, yeah, it took a few hours. And then the piece after that is called Still Life in Warm Tones. This is the exact same still life as the previous one, but it's an oil. This piece is entitled Cherub Still Life because I did not take the time to research the sculpture that this bust came from. Okay, this next piece, this is one of my favorites. It's titled Reach. Um, the concept of this piece really changed as I was painting it. It was originally gonna be about colonization and there was gonna be a little boat on top of the hand, but then it changed from that to pollution and people represented by the island running away from their problems. I just wanted to emphasize how humans continuously try to run from the problems that we create, but they will always eventually catch up to us. This next piece is also an environmental piece and I really love the way this turned out too. This one is called Sinking and it's meant to emphasize the destruction within the fast fashion industry. All right, and then the final item in my portfolio is this large still life behind me. I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but I just called it teapot still life because the main focus of it is the teapot. Yeah, this took me quite a few hours. I also did this in my studio. I think I spent almost the whole summer on it. This was a huge project for me and definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone, but I am really happy with the outcome. So yeah, that is the end of my portfolio portfolio and onto the RISD assignment for this year. So of course I was preparing to respond to a one word prompt, but no, this year they decided to change it up. At first it was super confusing. It took me a while, it took me months to figure out how to actually do this project. But after talking to RISD admissions officers and to my art teachers, I finally figured out what I would do for it. So if you don't already know, it's separated into two different steps. So I will read the first one. Begin by observing a phenomenon or choosing an object in the natural world. Create a visual reaction to this object or phenomenon. You may use any medium and work at any scale. Document this work and upload it as your first response. So this is my first response. It's a charcoal drawing of a forest. More specifically, it's supposed to be an Australian forest. I put a little kangaroo and some koalas in the trees and also some birds flying around. 
this. I made this at the time when the Australian fires were really big in the news and I really wanted to both bring attention to it and also artistically express myself through a new medium. I was really proud of how this came out. This next piece, however, uh, step two. Next, make a transformation or a modification to your first response. We encourage you to impose no limits to the potential nature or scale of the alteration to your first solution. Document this altered work and upload it as your second response. Okay, so this is my second response and it is perfectly titled Chaos because it is indeed chaotic. Um, it took so long for me to come up with how I wanted to alter it, placement of everything. I put it into Procreate and I scribbled all over it. In the end, I decided to submit this as my final piece, partly because I was out of ideas and drained from this entire process, and also because I felt as though I got my message across, even though it wasn't as technically focused as my other pieces. So that is how I got into RISD plus my art portfolio. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want some more art related slash college related content. Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.